you, my name is Rob. So everyone say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi. However, as wonderful a name as Rob is, that's right, I didn't feel it was interesting enough, nor scientific enough, nor quite frankly, jazzy enough. Oh. So you can call me, go ahead. So you can call me by my man's highest name, which is Radical Rob. So everybody say, what's up, Radical Rob? What's up, Radical Rob? And we've got all sorts of really cool other man scientists here to help our guide us through our activities today. Professor A and Tarzard and Atomic Aaliyah. You'll get to meet all of them a little later if you haven't already met them. But for the next few minutes, uh, or a little longer than a few minutes, you're going to be focused on my pretty face. <laughs> I'm going to guide you through a couple of experiments, all right? Before we get started, the three quick rules. And one little game that I'd like to share with everybody, because I think uh, games are a nice way to get to know one another. And since I don't know everybody, it's a very simple game, but it's very important. Because in science, we make observations all the time. Now maybe you're looking at me going, hey man, I'm just a little kid. I do not know what you're saying. <laughs> but you're all mature young people, so you probably do know. Anybody have an idea what an observation is? Thanks for raising your hand. Observation basically is what you see. What you see. Was that what you, do you agree? Yeah? Allegra, do you have anything to add, or is that um, sufficient? An uh, observation is something like you can like, also take notes on it, like we do in class. Right? Absolutely. We make observations all the time. I like to say that an observation is anything you learn using any of your five senses. Uh, you just have a Thanks, go. How are you doing? Good. Give me five. But don't hurt me. I'm very bad. I'm a model constitution. <laughs> you look like you're ready to hurt me. She's fierce. Thank you. So, Allegra, we're going to explore a couple of different branches of science today. We're going to talk a little bit about chemistry, a little bit about physics. Are you guys familiar with chemistry at all? Yes. Yes, what is chemistry? Well, basically, it's different types of chemicals and these, and also what the heck are you doing, what the heck are you doing? No. But I, I like the first part of what you said. All right. Where are you going? Why are you halfway back in your seat? We're going to start with the chemistry uh, that is an example of chemiluminescence. Now, again, you're probably looking at me going, uh, those are big words. I do not know what it means. Chemical luminescence. Anybody have an idea what that might mean? Let's see. Uh, well, glowing, um, kind of taking glow, like luminescence, like sometimes being glowing or stuff like that. Give me five. Luminescence means glowing and producing light, right? So chemical luminescence is a chemical reaction that produces light. All right? You might use, I, does anybody go trick-or-treating during yeah. Halloween? All right, so this is an example of a chemiluminescent reaction that a lot of times we'll use at Halloween. It's pretty cool. There's two different chemicals separated. There's a glass or, or a thin plastic tube in here with one kind of chemical and a thicker plastic tube out here with another one. And when kept separated, there's no reaction happening. But when they're allowed to mix and react, they produce light and produce chemical light, which is nice because it's light without producing heat. Uh, would you like to try to do this for me? You know how to work crack this? It. This is a light that you crack it, okay? Sometimes people can't crack it, so I'll, I'll help you if you need. Get the fucking coal! You get the help! I know, here, I'll help you. Here, here. Don't look at me, I, I know I'm pretty. Look at them. Okay, do it. One, two, three. Oh, okay, good. Now shake it, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture! Thank you, very good. Oh, look how beautiful this is. And now we produce this lovely chemical light. And this will last for about 8 to 12 hours. It will last even longer if you put it in the freezer. And this is for you. But I'm going to hang on to it until later. People don't pay attention if you hold this while I'm talking. You got it? Okay, all right. So I'm going to do this right here. All right? But So that's an example of Kemi Luminescence. You can go sit down. Big round of applause. And this is a Kemi Luminescent reaction. Now, I also have a demonstration of something that's a hydrophobic reaction or a hydrophobic element. But again, I get the feeling by the glee is looking at Eva's face. She's like, what? Why, why do you use so many words? I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? So let's, if, we, we should, if we're going to be scientists, we should figure out what these words mean. Hydrophobic. Do you have an idea? Hydrophobic actually means a fear of something. Hydro means water. So, uh, water oh, here. Water. A fear of water. So this, my friends, is hydrophobic sand. Sand that is scared of water. Does that make any sense? No. no. How no. can sand? Ah, what did you say? It's got a special chemical coating on this sand that doesn't allow it to mix with the water. Normally, if I put sand in some water, what would happen to that sand? Yes? It would sink to the bottom. It would sink to the bottom and plump up, right? I'm going to put some sand right here. Can you see where my hydrophobic sand stays? It forms this layer on the top. I'm going to I'll bring it close to you so you can see it. 
take a look. Can you see how it's staying at the top? And if you look underneath, there's almost a shining, shimmering force field. Point. Under normal circumstances, if I were to stick this in water, I would probably uh, moisten this to the point that the, the fuel on this match wouldn't work, right? But check out my hydrophobic sand. Now, when I stick my match in there, can you see that? That shining, shimmering force field that I was talking about before, it's now coating the match completely. So do we think, what is our hypothesis? Is the water actually touching that match? No, no, no. I don't well, think so. Because you are a crazy scientist, and the match is It's a good point, yes. I know, because it, 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 um, the, you said that the sand doesn't actually touch the water, and it's coating that stuff. It's not touching the water because the sand is protecting the match. It's creating like a barrier or a force field, right? Do I take the match out? <coughs> Wrap it off. Let's see. Let's see if it will light up. It looks like there might have been a little part that got wet here. Though. Hey, I'm right. That's it. You can see. It did get a little wet. You can see it did light it up. All right. As cool as that is, though. Hold on. The water. Do you see my finger? Yes. Do you see my finger in the water? Oh. <laughs> Allegra, could you come back up here for a second? Okay. Can you touch my fingertip? Is it wet? No. No, stay dry, right? So in just a moment, I'm going to invite each of you to come up and do this experiment. You're going to come up and take your fingertip. And you, you see how your fingers like three sections? I, I like to call this, sec this is section one, section two, section three. I like to call this, uh, by a very scientific name, the tippity tip. Don't laugh, this is serious! <laughs> Alright? So when you do this, you want to go straight down with the tippity tip and then straight back up. If you go diagonally or you kind of shake around while you're in the water, do you think your finger will stay dry? Probably not in the experiment. You'll be like, oh, the experiment didn't work for me. But if you go straight down, straight up, it should work. As we do this, some sand may start to clump down to the bottom. You see that? Yeah. And it starts to, to form kind of what I think is a really cool sand sculpture too, right? You ever heard of, there's a commercial product called Squam? You ever heard like of that? It does look a little like a frog. You can make sort of underwater sand sculptures oh, yeah, saw, using yeah, this I stuff. Saw and that. That. Now, I think it would, be, it would be a long time for everybody to wait uh, one at a time to do this. So I'm going to have one half of the group line up here and do this, and then one half of the group line up here and do another activity and then you're going to switch to the other activity, we're going to explore a little bit of physics. I'm going to borrow some electricity from back here. Come here, Mr. Experiment Board. I know you're hiding. <laughs> and this right here is my plasma sphere. Oh, yeah, you guys yeah, familiar yeah. with this? These yeah. are pretty famous devices and they're way cool. And what they do is they create a little storm of electrons inside of this glass dome. So we've got these arcing lights of electricity. Would it be possible to shut off all the lights in the suite? we got a lot of ambient light coming in, but I think we'll see it's a little bit better here too. But this is really good for testing the conductivity of certain materials. If you wanted to test whether or not metal is a good conductor of electricity, so I take a, a metal item and now look, can you see that big arc of electricity that goes to the metal? Does everyone see that? Okay. If I were to test plastic, do you see a big no. arc? No. Plastic is an example of something we call an insulator, all right? Whereas metal is a conductor. conductor. Very good. Conductors of electricity allow for the easy flow of electrons, the easy flow of electricity through the item. That also makes us pretty good conductors of electricity because our bodies are mostly, anybody know? Water. Water conducts. And water is a great conductor of electricity. Yeah. So I'm going to invite you guys up. Half of you, like I said, will do this, half of you will do this, and then you'll switch. And what you'll do when you come over here, will just take about, you know, 30 or 40 seconds, and you can test your fingers. You can test your nose. No! If you feel like your brain needs a little extra power, you go, Don't test your tongue. That's disgusting! Nobody wants to touch it afterwards either. It's dry, right? It feels like it's dry. It felt like it was wet, but when you were touching it, right? So all right with you. I'm just gonna take just just the briefest of breaks and have a have a little drink. 
because uh, you guys are kind of wearing me out. Okay, so is that right? I can take a little drink break. No, I can't take a drink. You're you're taskmasters. Wait, you wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 whoa. Why are you pointing and laughing? You're doing a lot of giggling. <laughs> this whole time, you make me very self-conscious. What's the problem? You're drinking out of a baby bottle. Well, you hey, I'm a dirty beaker. Yeah. Of course, I'm drinking out of a baby bottle. No, I can't just drink out of the beaker. Actually, no. I'm gonna do an experiment with this. I drink out of baby bottles. <laughs> When we inhale, we inhale a lot of the gas called oxygen. Oxygen, right? Everybody take a deep breath of oxygen. Now blow it on your hands. When we exhale, we exhale a lot of another gas called carbon dioxide. All right? And carbon dioxide is what uh, gives soda fizz, makes it fun to drink. Uh, but it is gas, so it takes up space. Which is why you never shake a soda, right? Because what happens if you shake a soda? It explodes. Yes. For example, check this out. Go Sorry, did I? Did I get you? The reason I sprayed you all with uh, carbon dioxide gas and well, number one, because it's extremely fun. But number two, because I wanted to introduce our next concept. Because I have some carbon dioxide with me, but I have it in a very special form. Oh, dry ice. Dry ice, absolutely. Now, some of you are probably going, hey guys, in my house, what's so cool about dry ice? Dry ice is different than regular ice. What's regular ice made from? Water. Water, water right? We take water like this. And we freeze it and we change it from being so, uh, a liquid to a solid, right? Two of the commonly three recognized yeah. states of matter. We have solids, we have liquids, and we have gas. gas. We all have gas. I thought it was just me. <laughs> Disgusting. Now, what's interesting about dry ice is it's not frozen water. It is a frozen gas, right? It's actually frozen carbon dioxide. Like we said, if we breathe in oxygen, if you could freeze, blow out our hands, get the breath coming out of your body so cold that it turned to solid chunks or chips of ice, this is what it would look like. I've seen one on a YouTube video. Yeah, me too. I'm going to come around and show you guys. And I'm going to use the gloves. Now, these are the little chips of dry ice. Now, can you see how I'm wearing gloves? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why do you think I'm wearing gloves? So you don't hurt your hands? Absolutely. Dry ice. To get this carbon dioxide to freeze, hold on. But don't be the person that grabs the rice. To get these carbon dioxide pellets to freeze to solid, we've got to get them to about negative 79 degrees Celsius. To freeze regular water, you know what temperature on the Celsius yeah. here? Zero degrees Celsius, all right? That's pretty cold. But to get this to freeze, we've got to get it to negative 79 degrees below that. So cold that if I were to touch it with my bare hands, I would get something called frostbite, which kind of feels like a burn. Isn't that weird? Something cold that burns you? So we won't be touching. touching it with our bare hands. That doesn't mean that we can't do some interesting experiments. Now, the reason we use dry ice in a lot of day-to-day uh, -day applications is dry ice is not made from water, so it doesn't melt. It doesn't go through uh, the process of melting, it goes through sublimation. Can you guys say sublimation? Sublimation. Sublimation is the process where a solid turns to a gas without becoming a liquid. And uh, that's what happens to dry ice. Yeah. Also, okay? I'm going to take a few chips of dry ice. All right. And I'm going to place it in the water here. Okay? Now, in the air, sublimation happens pretty quickly. But molecules of water are much closer together than molecules of a gas like air. And so, <laughs> here we have, oh, sit down. And I have to sit down. I'm really close. Here we have our famous 
first mad science bubbling potion, all right? The warm water surrounding the dry ice chip and it's speeding up sublimation. Can you guys say sublimation? Sublimation. All right. So and the coolest part about this is I can cover this up, all right? And my Erlenmeyer flask is a cider, so I can touch the gas, all right? While the, the solid ice is unsafe to touch the gas, is not a problem. But I feel like I feel like some of you are so excited you're not paying attention. What? I'm going to cover this up to make sure you're paying attention because I cannot. Hey! Who did that, right? Sometimes in science, to make an observation, we look. Sometimes we listen. But occasionally, if we know that it's safe, we might even taste or smell an experiment like so. I want to try that. So I'm going to come around. You can open wide. Get some on your tongue. Ah, delicioso. So for you then. It tastes so good. What happens? What are the two things that you need for bed? And don't tell me a rubber ducky. Yes. Soap and water. Soap and water. So we've got soap and water, but this is a mad science bath, so we're going to have to see what happens when we mix dry ice with water. But now we've got soap in the mix. Do you think something different may happen? Yeah. No. No? Yeah. Let's find out. Can I borrow your head for this experiment? I can't borrow your head? Here, I'll show you. Can I keep her head? Yeah. No, yeah, we'll just, just borrow it. You, I will give it back to you. Oh, look at that. It's more crazy than last time. Now you can see, it's very good if you haven't had a chance to shower. 